Lucanite. It's been a while. Well, I casted a game about a week ago, but I guess it's been a while since my last OSL casted game from the last Korean Air OSL. This is Korean Air OSL Season 2. Yes, Korean Air has returned as the sponsor, which is great. They always bring the best production values to this thing. As you saw from the intro, that was a pretty epic intro. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with for the round of 16, that's for sure. And as usual, I implanted my own uh, music selection for the intro. Went with another Zircon song, which is... I used a Zircon song for the Ever OSL intro as well. So if you like that intro, go back watch uh, watch the Ever OSL intro. And then buy all of Zircon's stuff on uh, iTunes. Almost at eBay. Well, you might have a few albums up on eBay, I'm not sure. But yeah, he mastered one of my one of my albums quite a few years back. So the least I could do is use his intro music for at least uh, two OSL intros. But looks like we're getting ready to start. C versus Great. Oh boy. And we have a familiar face to start it out with. Eye of the Storm, which has been around for three OSLs now. It's becoming the next uh, Return of the King. Except, okay, down at the 8 o'clock position in beige is C. Up at the 2 o'clock position in red is great. Uh, it's good to start off with a map that I'm comfortable with. Because they they have two other maps so far in this OSL. And they're both new to the OSL. Which is Grand Line SC. Which has been used in Pro League recently. I feel bad because I don't know too much about it. Even though I've watched a lot of games on it. That's what I've noticed about casting the OSL as much as I have done the past few seasons. Because I focus in on OSL, I have really strict tunnel vision. And even when I watch the other leagues, I don't know anything about them. I can't tell you anything. Like the, the map Odd Eye 2, I've seen many games on it, I'm sure. But I could not point out to you what that map is. I have no idea. I think I've even commentated a game on that with Ranjin. But I know nothing about it. I don't know what tile set it uses. So... I am just completely OSL tunnel vision all the way on this thing. So I know a lot about the OSL maps, not so much about the new stuff. So I'm not going to know much about Grand Line SE, but the more I, the more matches I see on it, the more I'm going to know about it. And of course, the third map is one that's completely new. OSL loves to throw up some exclusives, like Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is a, an OSL exclusive map. But the next one is uh, Dreamliner. And I'm hoping we get to a third set here because I want to see some games on Dreamliner. Dreamliner might actually be in the second set. I'm not exactly sure. Man, I should have done my research on this. But yeah, it might be in the second set between these guys. So we might get to see it anyway. Either way, I'm hoping at least one of the series gets to a third set uh, tonight. Because, man, I want to see all of the new maps in action. Dreamliner is, well, I guess I'll talk more about Dreamliner when we get to Dreamliner, but just know this, it has a plane on it. There's a plane on Dreamliner, and that is another baby. Oh, that's, that must be the baby that was born after the uh, the finals, because I casted the finals, there was a pregnant woman there. That, that baby must have just flown out, said Goliath online, and then, uh, yes, it is there sitting in the audience, getting ready to watch C in action. Terran fan baby. But spawning pool coming up for great. He went for uh, 12 hatch, I believe. Throwing down his expansion, which is very safe on this map. Huge map. And I love this map. This is a very good map, I have to say. Very, very good map. But looks like C is deciding to... He's going to pro probably put on a little bit of pressure. Let's see if he throws down his expansion. And now he's going out with an SCV. So I think he is going to do the standard uh, flash type of play. A lot of Terran players have been following and Flash's footsteps, throwing down the fast ex fastest expansion they can. So they can get that overwhelming Terran force from two bases going on. Third hatchery coming up for great. I think we're going to see standard three hatch muta. And let's see if he can get that scout out of his base before uh, C sees, C sees what he's up to. But yes. Okay, C trying to get rid of Overlord. That Overlord is going to be safe, though, floating right next to this base. Uh, great wants to get in there, get that scouting information, see if that base is coming up. Oh, uh, this is so great. Brand new OSL. And like I said in my preview video, 
and uh, my wrap up video, I mean, is that this has this is a really really stacked round of 36. Very few unknowns in this thing. I think the only player that I don't know anything about is a player named Sack. <laughs> is two S's A K. So it's Sack. Man, that's a great name. I hope he gets into the um, OSL just because of that name. But we'll see soon enough. Uh, yeah, the, the OSL round of 36 is having a very weird schedule this time. This is not what I normally cast, by the way. I normally, they have a group a day. They have uh, three players playing in a single day. But now they're, they have, let's see, how do I explain this? They have the non seated guys playing on Wednesday, three groups of them playing. So that's where these guys came from, like Great. Uh, I think Great blasted through Best. Was it Best? I don't know. But I know that Ruby went up against Jang B, because that was a fun series to watch, Ghost with Lockdown. But uh, I said I'm not going to cast those games, and I'm not. So that puts me on a Friday, Saturday schedule. And they're really clumping up the games, really, really clumping them up. I think they're trying to kill me, actually, because that uh, this gives the possibility of nine games in a weekend. Because, uh, yeah, I decided a while back that I'm not going to be able to do nine games in a single day. So I d I'm going to break the, these three groups up because they're playing three groups a day. I'm going to do the first two series, C versus Great, and then uh, move on to the next one next week. Not next week. Tomorrow. Sorry, I'm extremely rusty. This happens every time I start a new OSL. I start uh, babbling like an idiot, but uh, as to be expected. Spire coming up. Hydralist in up, so there's no telling what Great's going to do. He's throwing down both of his uh, necessary buildings to get Lurkers and Mutalists out there. But he could be just getting up the Spire to deal with science vessels if they should come out sooner than normal. But okay, let's see what he decides to do. Might be trying to hide some tech. TeamLiquid.net, nice shout out there. By the way, I'm starting up a blog on TeamLiquid.net. I'm not sure if anyone's actually going to read it, and I'm probably going to end up deleting it by the end of the month after I run out of things to talk about. But I already have a neck, uh, another idea of something else I want to talk about on there. So keep an eye out on the Team Liquid blogs for Nuke the Stars. Thoughts with Nuke the Stars. I have a picture of me holding a pipe. It'll be awesome. But all right, looks like a great has expanded over the 10 o'clock position. Um, I'm surprised he didn't go for the... Um, oh, I guess it is a lot easier to hold with lurkers if you go for the very, very top expansion rather than the natural expansion of the 10 o'clock. Uh, you go for the natural expansion of the 10 o'clock when you're going up against a Protoss player so you can throw down some Sunkins. But with the kind of power that a Terran player can show at this stage in the game, you want to be able to hold that little choke area, little uh, walls right next to that expansion, hold that with lurkers, and then think about getting the natural expansion up there. It gives you four free bases, basically. But here comes C, very strong ground force, already has three medics in tow, and uh, Great has not morphed his uh, creep colonies into sunken colonies yet. He doesn't want to waste all the minerals if he doesn't have to. But let's see what he does. It looks like he's transferring his drones over to the new base. Oh, uh, he's looking a little bit panicked now because C, he, I think he's going to know about this base soon enough. He assumes it's up there now. So he's coming up. Oh, there aren't lurkers in position to defend it yet. So C, oh, here come the lurkers. Lurkers might be just in time here, but C, he's really got to push here if he wants to get by these lurkers. Lurker's coming in, and as soon as C sees the Lurkers, he's probably going to back off, though. And C could have definitely uh, done some damage at that 10 o'clock base because there was nothing there to defend that. Now the Sunken Colony is coming up. C is pushing right now, but it could be a little bit too late. That Sunken Colony is going to come up. And uh, two Sunken Colonies coming up now, and he could get pincered in uh, right next to Sunken and Lurkers soon because Great is not going to let up the resistance because he's moving up slowly and slowly. Bit by bit, with about four lurkers and all of his zerglings, let's see if C can take down this base before the lurkers get to him. I don't think it's going to happen because there's a sunken colony here. A sunken colony doing his best to take out everything. Last sunken and C getting pincered in. He should have moved in a lot sooner than this, but he was playing a little bit more cautiously. I don't blame him. Uh, C has not really been in this kind of position before. He's going to move into an OSL round of 16, which is pretty crazy for C. And all the Mutalist tech switch from Gray is coming in. He's going to try to get some Mutalist harassment now. 
switching away from lurkers and he's probably going to be able to pick off a lot of SEVs because I don't see anything in here for C oh he doesn't have any turrets no backup troops okay here come his marines coming in just in time kind of boxing those mutants in a little bit but uh, now C he has his tanks out he's trying to prepare for the push and he still has some troops camped out at the 10 o'clock base to see them up there so, okay, great. Got quite a few SCV kills, but I think he's going to back off now and take care of this troop that's up here. Lurker is pushing. Whoa, two Marines left. One Marine. Let's see if this can be a Rainer. Will it be a Rainer? Oh, taking down Zerglings. Okay, Z he's trying to run up here and get by everything. He's going to probably be able to take out about two more drones. Aw, oh, you don't mess with Rainer. Rainer messes with you.